Welcome now, calling Udo and Ed Dov, and let's talk about the madness that has been AFCON. You know, in Barbie, when like um, Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling are like in the car, and they go, oh, that's AFCON. It's been absolutely insane. It's been amazing. It's been so great to see, and it's great to have Colin and Ed, of course, who are going to help us. Uh, let's talk a little bit about these brackets before we get into it, because I'm very interested. Colin, let's get into yours first. Uh, obviously, uh, you, my friend, are Nigerian, so I want to see how much of that bias goes into this bracket. Talk to me about your bracket. Well, look, um, but a lot of bias and also <laughs> a lot of facts. I mean, the Nigeria Cameroon game is the most played game at the AFCON. These two teams have met seven times. And in fact, three of Cameroon's AFCON titles were won against Nigeria, which is not something that we like to talk about all the time. So, but hey, <laughs> but, <laughs> but if you look at what's happened over the last few years, Nigeria have had the better of Cameroon. In 2004, when we met in um, the AFCON, the quarterfinals, everybody thought, okay, this is all done. Nigeria might as well pack your bags and go home. It's Cameroon's win. What happened? We beat them 2-1. Um, in um, 2019, same thing happened. We beat them again. So, uh, and this was after coming off a loss against um, uh, Madagascar in the group stage. So, you, you, you'll you find that in recent years, Nigeria had the better of Cameroon. And uh, when you look at these two teams right where they are right now, in terms of the form, how they've played, you've got to say, look, Nigeria have got this. Uh, and so, I'm picking Nigeria from that bracket. Well... There's a few things about your bracket, too, that I like, Colin. Number one, Mali. Everybody uh, needs to keep talking about Mali. And you have them uh, doing the little upset here over Senegal, making it to the final. I mean, you know, do you think enough are, are such a good team? Look, I, I think Senegal are far and away right now the best team at the AFCON. But mm -hmm. when you get into the knockout stages, things tend to take a little bit of a wrinkle. And I think that the one team that can get that wrinkle, you know, going for Senegal have got to be Mali because Mali, they are Nations Cup veterans. I mean, they've always been there or thereabouts. Either you see them in the um, bronze medal match or you see them. Um, going all the way. And I kind of like the look of this current Mali team. And I think that they might just be the ones who take it to Senegal and then knock them out of the tournament. But in the end, your winner is? Well, now, I mean, you look, look at my bracket. Just look at my bracket. <laughs> look, look, I, 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 again, let, 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 let's look at, let, let's just go down a little bit. I, I, I just look at, say, um, the, the other team. Namibia, I think are going to get one pass Angola. Um, you go down the road, you look at Morocco. I think that uh, South Africa, I think that South Africa are a bit like um, the ugly duckling who think themselves a swan, um, <laughs> you know, or, or maybe I should say the gold, the, the gold um, plated um, jewelry who thinks themselves to be the real deal. And then you're not just going to get through. So I think that Nigeria um, are going to get there with Namibia, Cape Verde and Morocco. It will be Nigeria and Morocco in the semifinal and Nigeria to win. Now, on the other side, like I said, I think Mali might just be the ones who get the better of Senegal. Um, Egypt without Salah and not even being in there, I think they're looking a bit shaky now. And I think um, DRC might get the upset over there. Look, this has been an Afghan of upsets, and I see more upsets coming on um, going down the line. So uh, I think that's going to be in the end DRC against uh, Mali in the semi final, Mali to get there, Nigeria Mali in the final. And guess who, who does it for a fourth time at the Afghan? Super Eagles. There you go, man. Some victory. And absolute Ed, love. If, if I love Ed it. Says anything different, if Ed says anything different, he's never getting a Nigeria visa ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I would love I would love to say, I would love to say that Colin approached this exercise with his head, thinking clearly, putting patriotism to one side, putting his own personal feelings to one side. However, Colin, Nigeria, that's completely unconvincing, needed an own goal to beat Guinea Bissau who were outside the world top 100. Your goalkeeper was man of the match against Guinea-Bissau. That, that's not something to write home about. Whereas this Cameroon team, I feel they're growing in stature. They finally got rid of uh, Evandro Onana from the starting 11. And I'm, I'm afraid I don't think it's going to be a good evening. I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think Saturday is going to be a good evening for Nigeria, I'm afraid. As you well, can see from my grid, I've got yeah, Cameroon. Ed, this is your bracket right here. Run us, run us through it because I got to give you some props because you, you, you spoke highly of Morocco, of course. Of course, we know what they did at the World Cup. I was a little hesitant just because of the players that weren't doing that great domestically. But, you know, they're looking okay. So talk me to your bracket, specifically those early rounds going into the final. 
Well, as I said, look, I hope I'm wrong about Cameroon, Nigeria. And I don't think either of these two teams are particularly well coached, are particularly tactically sophisticated. However, Cameroon just have that character. We saw them against Brazil at the World Cup. We saw them drawing 3-3 with Serbia at the World Cup, qualifying at the expense of, of Algeria. Against Gambia, they were written off two goals in the last five minutes to qualify from, from the group. I think they're growing. They've got Vincent Abubakar coming back. And so that was one big call I made in the opening round was to put Cameroon going over Nigeria. I actually agree with Colin. Another big upset. I, I do agree with Colin on this one. It's a rarity. But I can see Egypt falling to DRC. The Congolese have actually impressed me. I really like that attacking unit with Bakambu, with Kakuta, with Silas. Johan Wiese, for me, has been one of the standout players of the Nations Cup. So I also agree with Colin that I can see Egypt falling uh, this weekend without Mohamed Salah in their ranks. Well, come on, guys. You've got to give a little love to my Equatorial Guinea, man. I mean, come on. I, I love everything about them. They have to be one of the best stories in the tournament. No? Colin, what do you think? Yeah, look, um, I think they've done well in the group stages when they were more or less like, you know, an unknown quantity. But now you get into the business end of the tournament and you've got Guinea who are very, well, you, you might say are used to being playing at this stage. And I think that Equatorial Guinea are no longer the unknown quantity that they were. And I think that they're going to have a lot of attention on Emilia uh, in Sue. Uh, so I think that Guinea goes through. I love it. All right, Ed, who's your surprise in the bracket? Who, 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 could, who do you see thinking they might make a little sneaky run? What do you think? Well, I did put Equatorial Guinea advancing to the quarterfinal. I think they actually could get past Guinea. I think Guinea have really not impressed me, struggled to get out of first gear, to be honest, whereas Equatorial Guinea, uh, I think they've, they've got a bit more to offer. I, don't, I think that their quarterfinal against DRC could be a toss-up, could go either way, but my prediction, I went with Equatorial Guinea falling at that stage. Uh, I also agree with Colin that, that Mali have been one of the surprise packages of the tournament. They've, they've uh, exceeded expectations. I can see them getting past Burkina Faso in the first round. But unlike Colin, I can't see them getting past Senegal. For me, Senegal have been a cut above any other team we've seen so far in the group stage. And I can't see, I can see Senegal going all the way to the final. But I think Mali's run will end uh, in the quarters. But you see Morocco winning the whole thing, right? Cautiously, yeah. I'm a little bit more cautious <laughs> than I was when we... That's not funny. That's not funny. Well, no, because honest, I mean, honest what I'm thoughts. trying to do here, gentlemen, is I'm trying to see if I can get both of you to agree on a winner here. Colin, can we change your mind? Can the emotions, can the heart... I mean, look, I'm Peruvian, so I can really empathize with you. Can the emotions release yourself? Do you see anything else other than a Nigeria champion in Africa? Um... Okay, so let's start with this, right? Ed says Nigeria have not been convincing. So I'm going to ask Ed a question. Um, at the last AFCON, Nigeria blew through the group stages. What happened? You know, now, and then when you when you look at where, how Nigeria have won previous tournaments, in 20, go back to 2013, for instance, we, we, we felt we're this close to getting knocked out in the group stages, you know, and then got all the way to the final. I mean, and then even in the, in the quarterfinal against Cote d'Ivoire, like I said, fans were packing their bags already and leaving. You know, going so, if back I can, so if I can kind of summarize your argument, it's basically Nigeria haven't been very good, so therefore we should back them. That's no, no, because that's not great. No, no, no. Let, let me get to the point. I'm just saying that when you look at precedent now, when you look at this Nigeria team, what is um, Jose Pesero trying to do? He's got a great team of strikers. They haven't scored goals, but what they've done, they've been more defensively disciplined than almost any other Nigeria team you've seen in the past. And what do they say about? Um, uh, goals winning you games and defense winning you championships. Defense is going to win Nigeria this championship. And the one thing Nigeria have always had against them when they play against Cameroon is bad defense. Bad defense all the time. And this time the defense is looking rock, almost rock solid. So I think that if I were to change my mind a little bit, I might go for Morocco. But when I look at the way this Nigeria team is playing in defense, and trust me, even the, the forward are not scoring, they are creating big chances. Every game they create at least a chance in double figures. Just wait until the first goal starts to go in for this front line, and then the, the dam opens. Good night to everyone. Ed's not buying it. Right, Ed? You're sticking with Morocco. Well, I'm, I'm sure you'll agree that if someone says we've got great strikers, but they're not scoring goals, that's already a, a very feeble argument right there out of the blocks. I think... Um, Cameroon have a really strong midfield. I, I really like the addition of Oliver and Cham, former Celtic in that midfield, whereas Nigeria just seem to run out of ideas on Yeka. Uh, Iwobi's been a bit disappointing for me. Uh, I think Cameroon could win it in the midfield. Uh, Nigerian defence is not bad, but when your goalkeeper's man of the match against Guinea-Bissau, 
it's uh, not a great sign, I think. It, it is, because when you look at it, I mean, no. the last time we lost, it was goalkeeping problems. And then, of course, we've got Alassane Yusuf back in the All right. so There's going to be a fight. <laughs> you guys, I love it. But see, this is what's great about this tournament, because really, one thing that we do know is that the unpredictability of this tournament will continue in the round of 16. And I bet you we will see some more surprise results.